please welcome Matt Bomer. A little bit of love. Them in. Um, I'm gonna have to go back to my audition for Mickey Mouse Club. <laughs> yeah. um, I didn't have a headshot, and um, I was just kind of rolling with the punches. And uh, <laughs> I went with a friend and just got in line to do it. I was just telling this story earlier, mm -hmm. but um, this girl in front of me sang Eternal Flame by the Bangles as her audition song, and then so I just sang the same song she did. <laughs> <laughs> and that was on plan. I actually ended up getting pretty close to being on the show, and it was the same time, like, JT and, and Britney Spears and all those people. Is that the Ryan Gosling cool era? Yeah, Gosling oh my era. God. That's such a cool story. Yeah, <laughs> so I didn't even have a headshot, man. I was just like, I'm here! <laughs> because I felt like I, I didn't want to be the one asshole that said no. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and, and now that I'm in this experience, like the, the thought of having to come see all these, oh, Jim's phone fell again. Oh. Jim Parsons dropped his phone and Matt Bomer has it in his but pocket. But the thought yeah. of having to come see, if I had said no. We're in the trust tree, we're not being cocky, we're not being arrogant, you know that you are stunningly good looking. You know what what the what, or what society deems to be good looking. Whatever we can have that conversation another time. You know based on the hair and the eyes and the teeth and the jaw and everything that you are stunningly attractive. I mean, maybe I'm just not my type. You know what I mean? Like, you son of a bitch. I, I, I That's a great fucking answer. You know, uh, uh, <laughs> as Superman. I think it was five or six. My mom made me a homemade cape. Uh, for Halloween one year. First, I was Superboy to my brother Superman because whatever superhero he was, I was either the lesser version of it or um, the sidekick. So when he was Batman, I was Robin. When he was Superman, I was Superboy. Um, but like any four-year-old, it played very heavily into my psychology. Because, you know, and I think that's what makes the character really resonate for so long with so many people. So. He's who we hope we could be in the most dire of circumstances. Um, but my mom made me a cape, homemade, and I wore that thing out <laughs> for like two years. I didn't even care. I had no shame about it. I mean, I would strap it on. It had a snap right here. I'd get on my bike, just let it trail behind me. People would laugh. I didn't give a damn. <laughs> I was Superman. Now so, you are Superman. <laughs> now I'm the voice of Superman. <laughs> Yeah. How, so, did, how did you wrap your head around that role? Like, what did you want to carry over from other interpretations, and what did, how did you want to make it like your own thing? It's a good question, and you know, I'm trying to answer this uniquely. Since I've been asked a few times, but it's you know, it, the character is so iconic to everyone, and not just guys. I think every guy and girl would love to get to play Superman at some point in their life. Um, am I right, girls? Am I wrong? Yeah. Okay, all right, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's obviously Christmas time. I guess cowboys were the theme that year. Yeah, it looked like I'm maybe four or five. Did you have any other siblings? Or? I did. I had an older brother who had a matching cowboy getup. I think he's been edited yeah, as a photo. Sorry, Neil. Yeah. I hope I lived up to your hopes and dreams, honey. <laughs> I'm not saying it's right, but I am winning. The farm hussy. You're crushing me. The farm hussy. Children's book. Strip club? <gasps> oh, 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 I just wanted to get one. That's all I wanted. <laughs> um, the lumber yard. Children's book. Strip club. Mm, two to two. Uh, Here we go. Is this the tiebreaker? Yay, the tiebreaker. Right. Yay, this is the tiebreaker. Mm. Shag the pony. Mm. Children's book. Strip club. Oh, oh my! <laughs> All right, you get a prize. You each get a prize because everyone's a winner here. But don't I don't look, believe don't look. in that. This isn't the magic bag. This is the fuzzy hole. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that that wall. If this is the fuzzy hole, I have to grab this because the texture. <laughs> oh, oh, it's kind of it's it's disappointing. Cute. But okay. Oh, no, you can give this. Uh, so I thought it was gonna be something naughty, but I would. I would Oh, Ooh. Aww, put that on. Yeah. <laughs> See, <laughs> it's a team effort. That's what this movie's all about. That's true. There are no winners or losers. There we See, go. Let's do it together. This well, is Frere Jaca. Volcanic erupt. Yeah. I worked on the pipeline, on the gas pipeline from Texas all the way up to Ohio because my brother's an engineer and it was a great way to make a lot of money. 
really fast. And, uh, you know, it's not the worst job, but it was certainly a challenging one. That sounds like it would sure. be a tough job. What did it you was. actually do? What, 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 you surveyed, you basically had to, <laughs> this is fascinating television, you basically had to survey <laughs> no, gas pipeline and walk across, you know, these rural farmlands all the way from Texas all the way up to Ohio to make sure there was no corrosion on the lines. So basically from sunrise to sunset, you were walking and moving. How did you transition into acting from that? Well, I was in acting school at the time. It was okay, basically so you were paying for me to bills. be able to pay to go okay, to school. All right, all right, that's yeah. how you paid but your I see where through. you were going with that, because that would be yeah. a great Jerry Bruckheimer movie. You know what I mean? Like, on the pipeline, but like, <laughs> yeah, I want to dance. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I, I'm you know. on the pipeline, but an asteroid is headed for Earth, and they need all different kinds of people to go. No, but the, and working I was thinking more like the flash dance angle. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. like, I'm working on the pipeline. Like, I just want to dance. I just want to dance. It just sounded like that job would be really like hot and dirty, though. It was, for sure. Okay, all it right. could be a routine Pretend of that in Magic yeah, Mike Part just, 2. Let's I think just we say... got some corrosion. It's time to get down and dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Pipe bursts. Exactly. <laughs> Water spills down. It's yeah. actually, it's actually pretty. Do you, why is Superman still relevant after all these diehards? Oh, Isn't this. that great? <laughs> <laughs> I have to get this. Like, just, just put it, Google it. Yeah, that's all I found it. I'm like, right. does that exist? And it does, so. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. I'm just like, I'm a Google Frozen Han Solo app. <laughs> Did you ever take any time to like just zone out and watch TV and leave behind the normal heart, or were you just in it? Can I tell you what's crazy? I the whole time we were filming this movie, I was like, I'm not watching Philadelphia. I'm not rewatching Philadelphia. <laughs> It's too great. It's amazing on its own. I don't want to steal any of that stuff. I'm leaving it alone. And I wasn't watching TV. I was doing a lot of reading. I was actually doing a lot of meditating because, I, you know, I, when you don't have any energy, that's a really fun thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, so I was doing that, and I finally I was like, you know what? I'm going to flip on the TV. And um, my place in, in New York has, was it called TiVo? It has TiVo, so it's like this old school thing. It only got like six channels for some, I don't know how to work this thing. And I flip it on, and freaking Philadelphia is on TV. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? I'm like, in this existence of living as this character, I'm like, I think I want five minutes to escape from this world. Bam, Philadelphia. <laughs> Did you have the energy to turn it off? No. <laughs> I was like, fuck it, I'm watching it now. <laughs> okay, I get it. I'm watching it. I clearly need to steal something. Let's go. And I did, and I did. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> so, no, but I did watch it through, and I'm, I'm really glad that I did. Jenna Vento would like to know, what was my reaction when I read the last moment of the season finale for season two? Holy Crap. Can I say crap? Yep. It's nice. Yeah, I was kind of blown away. Can we, can we sing to him? Mm -hmm. Happy birthday? Oh. Would you guys yeah. for that? <laughs> I really want to, but I'm a terrible singer. Will you guys help me? Anybody want a microphone? Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. I'm sorry I sounded terrible. <laughs> that will probably never happen again. I'm sorry What would you say is your kryptonite? <laughs> oh man, cookies. <laughs> Did you buy a lot of Girl Scout cookies? Cookie. I'll what get into a cookie. Well, while we're on the subject, yes, I did buy some Girl Scout cookies, as a matter of fact, for my co-star, Tim Decay's daughter, Dana. Um, Samoas. I'll get down on a Samoa. <laughs> Don't turn your head away from me. If there's a Samoa box nearby and it's yours, because you will turn away for two seconds and it will be gone. <laughs> have, you, have you ever had Australian Tim Tams? Preach to me. <laughs> Let's just Tell say that I bring the Tim Bible Tams. for everyone that I know that lives here every time I come. Where's my Tim Tam? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't any today. I can bring some tomorrow. Oh, if it's a cookie, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I can only say that like that. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a cookie, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> if you find yourself in a... I worked surveying the pipeline mm -hmm. from Texas all the way up to Ohio. 
So we've been talking about this, you know, maybe Jerry Bruckheimer could get this and we could just turn it into a whole flash dance. Thing, I like this. Yeah. He's surveying pipeline by the day, but he really has aspirations and dreams of being a dancer. Right. And that none of the other guys around him <laughs> want to dance. You know, and then no one understands right? that chewing their tobacco right. and Don't you understand? I just want to dance. <laughs> just get it, guys. You can be like hitting the pipe to a beat and you know, like with your eyes. Get it! <laughs> I just gotta dance. <laughs> <laughs> Matt? Any manscaping? When you have a suit do like I that, you manscape? look that strong. Do you any things that, that you must do? Well, I, I mean, don't. I, I don't manscape. None. No. Trimming of the chest hair, nothing I, like that. You know, I wish I had more chest hair. Then I maybe I would trim it. But I. I, I, I was Robin Williams. Sort of naturally <laughs> smooth. <laughs> down a little bit. I, I had You're to doing do the scissors. summer manscape to cool it out, cool yeah. it down a little bit. Exactly. I've lost five pounds of hair on me. It's incredible. My Alec Baldwin, Robin Williams, and me. No, My husband won't do anything. He will no manscaping the brows are out like Andy Rooney. God makes you the way he makes you. you just rock it, baby. <laughs> rock he it. made that hair. Look at that hair. It's perfect. Great hair. <laughs> Bombshell. I thought he, I had great he, hair. He created me with this gel in my hair. <laughs> so I just left it there. He put it you there. You know what? Bombshell doesn't have to do anything. There's no manscaping. Yeah. Who was your Superman as a kid? Was it was it the Christopher Reeve ones? Was it? Yeah. He, he was, I mean, first it was um, the comic. Or I remember distinctly a puzzle that I had that my mom had got me where he was battling a gorilla. Okay. That I still have. <laughs> Nerd. Um, <laughs> That's right? correct. And here's your cast post. Wow. By the way, you are that is so, so gorgeous. Not a slice of reality. Yes, that, it that is. is. <laughs> that is after like three months of starvation and and working out way too much. So it's much. hard to get in that kind of shape. It is, and not something I ever plan to maintain. I mean, it's <laughs> but it's great because we have all the guys. We're in it together. You yeah. know, it's like. We all know that a sweet potato is a big indulgence, you know, so we can, like, band together that, that way. Is that really a big indulgence? A sweet potato is a big indulgence? You're so we're, disciplined. We're, we're talking about that kind of level yeah. of, of discipline in the Would diet. Would it make everybody yeah. grumpy, though? Because when I get hungry, I'm grumpy. <laughs> you know, I, I normally I would be, but I think because we were all in it together, we were having so much fun, and we all genuinely like each other, uh -huh. um, it didn't feel that way. It felt much more like we were on a team together, you know? It felt like a team sport. But then when you're done shooting, what did you do? You just eat anything you can? Yeah. We had the greatest night of our life, which lasted about two hours and then became painful, but um, uh, Channing set up this buffet. They'd asked us what all of our favorite indulgent foods were. So it was the most disgusting bacchanalian buffet you've ever seen in your life. I mean, it was like Fruit Loops and, and pizza and fried chicken and banana splits, and we were all like, yes, we can eat again. Oh! Oh. <laughs> oh, that's right. I haven't had that in six months. <laughs> so, I love that you just said. Do you have sons? I have three sons. Oh my God. I have three sons. Are they? <laughs> but none of them are, are Josh's age. No. Yes. No. They're... Okay. Yeah. Have they seen the movie? I'm old, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> have they seen the movie? <clears throat> no, they haven't seen it. They want to see it. Yeah. I, I'm a little concerned if it would upset them. Yeah. Um, Same. You know, I, I die in most everything I do. So <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna be anesthetized. Too. <clears throat> By the time I really croak, they'll be like, "Oh, there he goes again." <laughs> what about you? Play a con artist on on I White do. Collar. Yeah. Will you? Do you bring any of those skills from your personal life? Have you ever been a guy that can improvise on the spot to get out of a situation? Or I can improvise on the spot, but I, I think I have a terrible set of skills in trying to pull off any type of crime. I, um, I once tried to, in high school, some friends of mine and I tried to sneak my brother's car. I just turned 16. We tried to push my brother's car down the driveway in the middle of the night and take it out for a joyride at about 2 in the morning and bump into some trash cans. <laughs> and um, <laughs> needless to say, we got a flat tire. By the time we got home, the rubber was literally like slapping the cement <laughs> on the ground. My dad was waiting at the front door in his tidy whities <laughs> He's like, Matt Bomer, come inside, son. And we were only about 50 feet away, but I thought, because it was dark, I turned to my friends, I go, run! Are you serious? And we ran, and by the time I got back to my friend's house, my dad had already called, and I had to go back, and my license was revoked for a very long time. Well, your dad took it into and his own hands. He, he did, so, yeah, I don't have that skill set. Yeah. I love the character of Donald. <clears throat> How many of you have seen The Boys in the Band already? Oh my gosh, thank you. The rest of you need to come immediately. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Free tickets at the door when you leave. <laughs> <laughs>
So, no, so ask me. how do you prepare to be the voice of Superman, who's such an iconic character? I feel like I'm uh, like on a 70s. <laughs> <laughs> it's not mine. Like, should I be singing something on solid gold right now? Yes. Yes, give us a We know you can sing. You know, a character like this. You've been brave wearing a suit considering how warm it is. Mm. It's it's light in no. texture. I'm Matt not Bomber don't sweat. Trust me. <laughs> oh, Matt, Matt Bomber has control over his pores. I do. Trust <laughs> over me. his sweat pores. <laughs> He's just like, you, don't you do it. I'm not, don't you not sweat. what I say. Come up with your stripper name by using your uh, pet's first name. Yeah, and your first pet's name, the, right? Say, yeah. Oh, so you know. Is that right? Yeah. And, then and the your street first street name. name. Yeah. Yes. So uh, mine would be Angus Buttercup. So it's kind of cute, isn't oh, it? Yeah. <laughs> Angus Buttercup's is yeah. awesome. Oh. So what is uh, what is yours? No one's gonna be mine. Mine's really dope. His is so great, and yeah. mine's like not. That. Mine's Dixie mm. Eunice. I like that though. I had yeah. a Dixie once, but it was Did a you? lizard. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, wow. really cute, and it lost his tail. Oh, oh did it but they grow back? back, right? No, it didn't. Oh, oh. no. That was it just fell off. Dixie. Yeah. Poor Dixie. Yeah, I know. I had to pull oh it off. <laughs> Don't that, well, lizard. there goes my routine. <laughs> <laughs> my tail falls off. <laughs> so, what so you are the real life Ken doll, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah, on stage. I like to think of Ken as a, a prince on the streets and a freak in the sheets. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. You, you play a, a con artist. Tell people the premise of the show. I play a con artist who's... Um, prison sentence gets shortened in exchange right. for helping the FBI solve white collar crimes. Oh, okay. And uh, you know, he's a smooth, suave, sort of hyper intelligent guy who can yeah. talk his way out of any situation. And how far is that from you? Or are we there? The polar opposite. Yeah, really? Basically. Can you do that? You look like you could talk your way out of it. I that. can't actually. For example, I, I, was, um, I was looking to buy a house recently and I'm only in LA for 24 hours at a yeah. time. And so I rang the doorbell a couple times, the, the owners weren't there and I decided to jump the fence and take things into my own hands. Which was a terrible idea, and I'm it's not endorsing idea. it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a few steps in, I was actually kind of getting into it. It was a nice lawn. I wasn't peeking in the windows or anything. I was just right. checking out the lawn. Right. And I hear, hey! And I thought, okay, I can make a run for it, or I can turn and face this man who's incredibly angry. And he had some expletives that I'd never even wow. heard before. And being from Texas. And being from Texas, lot, that's yeah. saying something. And um, so he, you know, confronted me and was screaming at me. His wife came out and said, Oh, we know him, and went back in the house. And I thought, oh, great, she worked for the network. I've lost my job. This is over. And uh, he keeps cursing me out for a while, and I'm apologizing profusely. And um, he says, now get off my property, and we love your show. Wow. <laughs> you know, have you, <laughs> have you thought about uh, Needless to say, I didn't buy the house. You're great with a drill at one point. Mm. And I mean, Joe nails that mini mark yes. scene. Mm. Very good at just making inanimate objects look really pretty sexy. So I've just brought my handbag along. Just wonder if you mm. guys could have a little look and see if you can make any of this stuff a little bit sexier. Should I reach in bomb? I'm just, oh, gonna, no. just gonna get me one of these while I'm popping. I'm just gonna make this my pimp bird. Coco, is she in? Mm hmm. I feel you, B. I just fed it a cracker. My, my, my pimp bird died. Oh, he, he, is, broke broke, he broke He tried some of Cheney's moves <laughs> and he broke his neck. Oh, sorry, pimp bird. Bye, Coco. Pimp bird. Oh, dang, girl. Oh, I'm gonna stay far away from the cucumber and <laughs> just like <laughs> not even. Hello. How are you? What are my you? My Cadbury doing? Flake is right here. Uh, let me feed it to you, unicorn, because you're one of a kind, baby. <laughs> <laughs> this movie actually affected me so much when I saw it. I had a dream that night I was attacked by a bear. Really? Yeah, but it was so cute. Oh, wow. It was like the little bear. Yeah. You were attacked by, like, Paddington? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, XXL, you just wrapped white collar, so are you taking so much deserved time off? I, I just wrapped white collar... Like um, today, right? About three hours ago. <laughs> Which is why I'm a little emotional. <laughs> yeah, because you, you put this great <clears throat> company of actors in a room yeah. and you want to see it turn into something. Yeah. And what yeah. you all bring to it. You're, and he's yeah. not heavy handed or yeah. capricious. He's really, he was extraordinarily patient and gracious and 
Um, you know, as a director, I, you know, you learn how to talk to actors yourself. Uh, and he just has such a way of, of phrasing notes and giving them to you in a way that makes you feel like you're in ownership of the note, as opposed to just some kind of didactic, really extreme, severe, austere, astringent command. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Is that too many adjectives? <laughs> Sorry. I've been reading a lot lately. I play Donald. <laughs> I, I try to focus on, you know, the ideals that he always stands for, um, but also um, hone it down to just what is this incarnation of Superman about in this particular story, and then do his directive. When you're in the hands of Andrea, you know, you can't go wrong. <laughs> she basically was my childhood. <laughs> Don't make me sing every song from the Disney afternoon right now, because I will. <laughs> And a remix. Oh, we, we need to hear the remix. <laughs> <laughs> I'm concerned. And I hope this isn't going on way too long. I no, I, are you kidding? I've got all day. I'm I did this. have I did have one moment that I still regret to this day, and I hope I'm able to amend it. Obviously, Meryl Streep is one of the greats that you everybody oh, wants to work with. Right. And there was this moment when we were at a party, and it was one of those great parties where, you know, people don't have up their normal defenses. Um, you know, so that you can engage a little bit more with, you know, maybe mm -hmm. people who you couldn't normally. And it was one of those moments where the party cleared and it was just Meryl and I walking towards <laughs> each other. And I wanted so badly to say everything I've wanted to say since I was a child and I just veered left. Oh my gosh. Because <laughs> what yeah. do you say to Meryl Streep that hasn't been said a million times? And no. I didn't want it to be that party for her. I wanted her to feel safe and engaged. And um, so, Well, that's another so big time. of you. Yeah. She probably felt it in your eyes that you communicated and connected with her. Or she was like, why did that guy just walk away? <laughs> <laughs> she probably went to that party to talk to you. And she was so fun. No, yeah, right. <laughs> I, I wish. <laughs> oh um, okay, so a lot of job because in the in the pilot was mostly action. It was like parkour and Krav Maga and all these wild things. And um, so I sat down with the creatives and we had a meeting. And then and then for whatever reason they hired me. But I just had the best time. There was this director called McGee who directed it. I don't know if you know any of us. We did Charlie's Angels and. But he has this amazing enthusiasm and infectious energy that just makes you believe you can do anything. Like, swing off that and then fly through that window and then land over there. And you're like, yeah! <laughs> and then as they're calling action, you're like, what the f did I just say I would do? Um, but yeah. Oh, boy. Wow. Yeah. And, and they must be thrilled that you just did this uh, animated movie where you play yes. Superman, the yes. voice of Superman. It was a blast. I had a great time. I did it for them to enjoy. and. Um, you know, you get to roll up in the booth in your sweatpants. Uh, I got a little bit into it physically. Really? Uh, yeah, because, you know, I, when you're doing an action, an animated action film like that, a lot of the, you're doing grunts and fight noises. And so, so I would physicalize it just, uh, 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 and then I'd look through the, uh, you know, glass and see everybody in the booth laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> but they got what I they didn't want. let it kill my spirit. But did, but so you were in the village. I know we have some pictures. Yeah. All right. Let's, all right, oh, this let's is not funny. start with that. All right, all right. Let's go here. Which one? Olympic Village. So yes. here you are. What's going That's on me. here? They have these art exhibits up in the village, and you can kind of participate in them. Participate? <laughs> and I did. Very cute. Yes. After an alcoholic beverage or two. This and is... then, uh, what is this? That is the victory oh, pose after Apollo X. Ono won. Yeah, that was... You were there? Yes. Yeah, baby. Wow. It's really incredible. You know, I, now, did, were you working there, or did you take the time to actually no, just No, USA go brought us up there to see it, and I mean, I felt like a preschooler. They, they took us USA everywhere Network, we needed to go. Yes, oh, they, they took us everywhere we needed to go to amazing events. They took us um, to, uh, snow, no, snow skiing mm -hmm. and um, to all different kinds of events, and they gave us milk and, and cookies and <laughs> everything what, are you else. Why you laughing because Parker had a, time, a hard time with snow skiing? <laughs> You know what I saw was the snow jumping, which is even scarier. Snow the ski jumping. jumping. The ski jumping. Oh. <laughs> the ski jumping. Everybody's which had, these guys. You know those brownies backstage were only for the crew. Were they? <laughs> Sorry. Um, but it was amazing. These people fly 300 feet in the air, and they don't fall. 
none of them fell. Well, how did and they get back down? They stop themselves. They fly and then they, and then they, they do they, the lean. Oh, right. They that's land amazing. and stop themselves. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, that's amazing. It's incredible. And then you guys went snowmobiling. Snowmobiling. Okay. Yes, we did. So you're with some of the guys from the show. Yes. And you guys decide that it's... We decided we were going to make a show called Snow Watch. Okay. Which Here's is the... basically Baywatch on snowmobiles. Here's the poster. Here's the poster for Snow Watch. That's hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> The first episode, we've got it all hashed out. You the first do? Episode, wow, they have the first episode. My, my partner at the station decides he wants to take up figure skating, and I have to come to terms with that. <laughs> it's going to be great. Oh. It's going to be great. So is that this shot, then? <laughs> oh, my gosh. See, I can have fun with Photoshop, too, man. That Matt. is amazing. Look at how Who's, good. Wow. You can do this. You are. I was going to wear that today, but now I'm, <laughs> I'm set. The audition rituals that you do? Do I have any audition rituals? No. I mean, you know, the best auditions, there's so many X factors that happen in auditions. I try to always just think that whatever's meant to be is going to happen um, and have as long as I feel like I've brought my best work to the table, I can walk away and go, oh, if I don't get it, I don't get it. And, and I, I, I think I've even gotten that way to if it's a big movie and I, that happens, I'm like, okay, well, it wasn't meant to be. Um, but there are so many. I remember one time I was testing for a pilot that I thought was going to be huge and such a big opportunity, and the casting director's phone went off right in the middle of my audition. And it was not on vibrate, y'all. <laughs> it was like... So I was like, do I acknowledge this? And it was like in the middle of a big monologue my character had. And I don't know, you know, when you test, it's like a room full of executives and you. And so I didn't know, should I break this up? What do I do? And there are just things that happen. Um, I kept going with the scene. I'm not sure if that was the best choice or not, because I think in my mind I was like, this will show them that no matter how many distractions I have on set, I can still keep going. <laughs> Um, so I just, you know, I, I just try to do, do the work I can do in the time I have. I always like having more time than less, which we're not always provided that luxury. But if I have material for a week, I feel that I can let go of all the technical aspects of things and kind of get lost in the scene. And that to me is when the most interesting work happens anyway. And so, um, you know, I always like it if I have a little bit more time. But I don't like, you know, spin around three times and, you know, I don't. You don't wear the same shirt to every audition. No. <laughs> every casting director just knows you no. from the one shirt. <laughs> no. Uh, what is your worst audition story that you don't mind sharing publicly? Didn't I just do it? <laughs> And how'd you get the deer to do that? Uh, that was a really surreal, and tell me if I'm missing any details, you guys, but I, that, we, <laughs> it was one of those things we were like, okay, we found someone who, there's a domesticated-ish domesticated deer who comes <laughs> to the yard in the morning sometimes. So we're just gonna go out there in the morning and put you out by the tree where your character will be and, and then hope that the deer approaches you. <laughs> Can we put something on my face? Yeah. Salt or something? Oh. I think we put salt on my face. And we just kind of hoped and prayed that this deer would come up. To, random, wild, but slightly domesticated deer would come up to my face. And thankfully she did. She was really curious. Yeah. Um, and the people, Montanans are really amazing people. And they're really humble. And then we're just like, yeah, we think she might do it. And so I sat out there. And it, it wasn't too long before she did. It was maybe 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, she went and saw the cameras, and I just had to, I had to basically hold it there, but it's really kind of this emotional beat for the character, so I was just kind of like having to stay at like, right on the precipice of something until this deer came up and licked me. <laughs> and I think she did it, I just shoot twice. Quick, quick shoot, we can get, like, Magic like Mike a, fans, let's talk about Magic Mike. Oh. We'll get into that. Sorry. I did not intend to bring that up. <laughs> the job that will never escape me. <laughs> But you know what's interesting about those movies? They are so popular around the world in so many different languages. Yeah. <laughs> Is that bad? Stripping knows no language. 
Did we bore you? Godspeed. God, you're good, Ian. Uh, they were like, oh, they're talking about the stripper movie. Let's get out of here now. That's loved ones. If you okay. were a general. Right, thank you. <laughs> if you were a general in the Civil War and you could get either a T-Rex or a modern war tank to fight on your side, what are you taking? <laughs> T-Rex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, the, the, the war tank is probably, like, a better weapon at war, but if you just had a T-Rex, yeah. like, send in the T-Rex. Yo, I mean, imagine well, what? don't send it in, man. I want to be on that thing's <laughs> back. Yeah. Just, like, ride it, mount up. Let's Daenerys go. coming through. <laughs> like, imagine, imagine what the rebel soldiers would do if you just came... Uh. Barreling down Atlanta on a T Rex. <laughs> See like, you later. All right, fine. Everyone's free. Get this thing out of here. <laughs> I want to see that. Yeah, I want right? to see that on screen. I feel like that could happen on that new HBO show. All, all right, <laughs> Matt, how about this? If we write the movie, will you promise to star in it right now? Hell yeah. yeah. Sight unseen. There we go. As long as I get to ride on a T Rex and just like. Plow through Southern soldiers. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, uh, when we were asked to do that, it was a very, it was like a $5 million independent film. Yeah. So I thought it was going to be, you know, the girlfriend experience or one of Soderbergh's, you know, smaller, more experimental indie films. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew it had some starry, splashy names in it. And Channing was really a star on the rise at the time. And Matthew was just right in the middle of the reconnaissance. <laughs> I love that. And uh, he, <laughs> so, but we got there, and I, I remember we were doing all the strip club scenes, and all of a sudden these suits started showing up at the monitor. And it was only the third or fourth film I'd done, so I was really green. I didn't know what was going on. And I remember saying to Channing at the time, well, what, who are all these people? Why are they here? Because it had been, you know, Stephen's sets are so closed off. They're so private. I mean, there's no bureaucracy there at all. And uh, they were like, oh, uh, there's a bidding war between studios for the movie. And I was like, well, if I'd known that many people were going to see me strip, I might not have done this. <laughs> but um, I'm glad I did. What is the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you on set? Uh, well, you know... Embarrassing is a relative term after you do two movies about strippers. Um, because you've kind of like bared it all for everybody. Yeah, you bared your soul to everyone. <laughs> including yeah. the, your soul and a lot more than that. And a lot more than that, yeah. Including takes where, you know, things went wrong so they didn't make it in the movie. So yeah. um, outside of that, you know, when I was doing uh, Doom Patrol, the first season, I my double in, in the project was this great actor who was like a 24 year old vegan like raw mm -hmm. vegan so he was uh -huh. like that skinny uh -huh. so at the time they hadn't finished my suit and so i had to try to wear his suit oh how funny and it was my first time doing like an action scene in front of the crew and there was this energy spirit that was like jumping around me and it was all green screen so i was kind of having to dodge all on my own and it was tight and uh <laughs> First take, I'm like, I want to make a great impression in front of the crew. Yeah. And I dodge down to duck, duck this thing, and it rips from <gasps> my ankle to my butt. Oh, no. In That's front of the so whole crew. Oh, and we God. had to, you know, <laughs> shut down for like 15 minutes while they stitched up this hole that I had because <laughs> <laughs> I was not a 24-year-old raw vegan. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. But... Uh, it, we laugh about it now, but at the time I was like, oh, wow, this is really dispiriting. I'm going to have to just pick my ego up off the floor, rock totally. it a little bit, and, and go at it again. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, and then you're... We're big on queuing here. Mm. What do you do if someone cuts in line? Who is it who's cut in line? Just a rando. Obviously, if it's an older lady and we're in the customs line at the airport and she clearly needs to run to the restroom or something, then I'd say... Yes, please, go ahead, of course. If it's just a young kid who's, you know, being saucy, then I might be like, yeah, man, go ahead. Do you want to go? There's always secret judgment. <laughs> Have you ever? On Friday night, you What's went your to the southern accent? Game. I, don't... I had to take elocution for four years in college. And, and how, and how, what were the well, lines? They teach was you to speak with that mid-Atlantic. Yes. You know, do yeah. the rain and space. All mind. that. All of that. All what, that. Do you remember any of the stuff that you had to? I, rem I remember the ask list. 
like the what? task or mask. Oh, to ask. Ask a I question. want to write a letter to Daddy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> all yes. of that. And because you can't do Shakespeare with a southern accent, so they have to neutralize Why you. not? I mean, you could if you really I, wanted to. I want to see Shakespeare with a southern accent. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? <laughs> <laughs> It is the East, and Juliet is the sun. <laughs> Let's talk about Joe Mantello. Joe Mantello is one of the greatest directors, one of the most yeah. sought after directors. What's it like working with him? First, in the rehearsal room? Well, I think, I, I mean, I think Joe is also one of the greatest actors yeah. uh, on the planet, and, I, and I, I do think he's the best director uh, working on stage today. Uh, I don't know if any of you saw Three Tall Women, but I, I could have gone. Oh, yeah. I saw it twice, and, and I could have gone and seen that every week. I mean, it was just phenomenal. Um, you know, his notes are so good that I would actually write down other people's notes. <laughs> That's how good his notes are. They're so insightful into the human condition. They're yeah. so universal, there were, I was like, ooh, I could use that in my life. <laughs> I, like, I have a journal yeah. of everyone else's notes on top of mine. <laughs> I had to like, color code them. Um, it's fun on set, right? You go, you're a very blast. close set. I hear you do, what do you do? You, you throw a, a, a <clears throat> boots of I, I have, song bomb? I have, I have termed it song bombing. Uh -huh. um, what is song bombing? Because I've never heard of that before. Basically, you know, morale can get a little low. At times, because we spend 15 hours, hours yeah. right. a day together with the crew, and when it's sagging a little bit, I'll basically try to get the most insidious song possible stuck in the entire crew. Give us one. So, and it has to come organically. Okay. So, you know, when they're moving the cameras, the AD will say, "Turn around, bright and I, and I'll say, eyes." Every now and then, I fall apart, <laughs> and I need you now or tonight. And then I'll just go into whatever song organically comes out of the conversation. And I know I've succeeded. It is so stuck in my head yeah. right now. Yeah. You know what we do? I used to do the I Sanford song. I song-bombed you. <laughs> you yeah, I definitely song bombed. <laughs> we have a clip for the show. Yes, oh, nice. we do. Let's get into the clip. I, I don't want to. I want to sing. Turn, Turn around. around. <laughs> now and then Mission accomplished. Oh, God, okay. In this scene, which... <laughs> now, your character does, I think, probably one of the most spectacular belly flops into water I've ever seen. I mean, that's like Olympic standard belly flop. Right? Thank you. Um, just I wish I could take credit for that. Straight um, down. I was, was wondering if that... Right, okay. Um, the first 15 feet or so were me, and then the rest was a dummy. Oh, okay. Well, uh, hang on. The first 15 feet, how do you get intercepted as part of a fall? Well, they cheated it up ah, fine. and put mats down ah, and put me fine. on a platform. And then I fell from there onto the mats. That's impressive. But I did do some pretty crazy. amazing 15-foot belly flops onto those mats. Yeah. Because I hadn't looked at the camera frame, so I had no idea when I was going out of frame. Right, so I was okay. like, I better just keep falling. Mm. I mean, you say that now, but I'm, I'm, I'm less, <laughs> much less impressed than I was <laughs> now that you. I know that you basically Listen, I got to own it. I have to be honest. Yeah, there were a couple of things. I, there was one day when we had to get ready, and, and they hadn't turned the generators on, so it was dark in my trailer, and I had to get uh, put my thong on. And uh, thong, whatever you want to call it. And uh, <laughs> my junk wasn't fitting in it properly, so I eventually had to call a wardrobe girl over, and I realized, you know, all the holes are kind of equal yeah. size. Yeah. So I, I had it on wrong. Yeah. <laughs> How do you do that with the makeup? Yes, with the wardrobe person. Can you fix well, my junk? Well, basically, you have to just say, listen, I'm going to break it down for you right now. You're going to have to look at my junk. <laughs> and fix the situation for me. <laughs> and thankfully, we had people who were professional and very helpful. I'm just picturing like what happens. Yeah. Well, what do you dress up as? Do you dress up? I usually let them dictate what I'm going to be. Like one year, I was Woody from uh, Toy Story. Uh -huh. and, uh, last year, I got stuck here because of Sandy. I was working here and I couldn't get home, but they had wanted me to be a zombie lunch lady. Oh. So I'm kind of glad I didn't have to come up with you're that so, one. But you're so gorgeous. You, I feel like you could be a lady in three seconds if you just. <laughs>